15 years since a little girl who stole our hearts and became the public face of AIDS in New Zealand passed away. We're joined now by Eve's mother, Gloria, and Rachel Le Monsurier from the AIDS Foundation to discuss Eve's legacy and the status of HIV in New Zealand today. Welcome, ladies, to the show. Are you okay, Gloria? Yeah. Good to see you, Eve, again. How, how often do you look at video of Eve and photos of Eve? Um, well, every day we look at photos, but uh, the video I haven't looked at for some time. So is it hard to look at it now and look at her smile? And... Um, oh no, it's just you, it's just a lovely memory and, and um, I've just put um, Eve's ashes on the ground at Rudolf Steiner at Labour Weekend, so yeah, after 15 years. So. 15 years? How old will she be now? 26, oh, yeah. yes. Do you ever think that sometimes, if, if she had lived? Um, yes, I do. I, I um, do think about that. and. Yeah, it's a... It was an amazing journey you went on with your whole family because you were in Australia and what happened? Eve was diagnosed as being HIV positive. Um, just before her third birthday and um, and then we were, she was at a daycare centre because I was working and um, we went, uh, there was tests done in, because she was premature and, and she just wasn't growing so mm. they tried to find out what was wrong and it wasn't it was just before her third birthday they diagnosed her with HIV. Because she got it through a blood transfusion as well didn't she? Yes the third to last, tra third to last transfusion she had uh, in hospital was... When she was, um, when she was just premature. born mm. wasn't it? Yes. Oh, uh, it was uh, in the third month she was in she was born at 28 weeks so she was really little. Mm. Mm. But the reaction of people in Australia I mean tell us about it from your point of view because it was quite bitter and horrible wasn't it? Uh, absolutely, yes. It's unbelievable, mm -hmm. really, that anybody could uh, act like they did. Um, what things happened? And I happened? didn't realise that's you know what would happen. Um, the doctors told us to go home and, and live a normal, happy life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I went home and told the daycare centre because I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to tell them. Yeah. No. But I went to tell them, and that was when they gave us the ultimatum that uh, we had to take Eve out or. Um, they would go public, so I got in first and went public mm. first, and but I didn't know what was going to happen. And, then, and what happened? I mean, the most unbelievable happen things oh, happened yes. to you and to your little girl. <clears throat> what were yes. some of the things that the public did or people um, did in the community? Uh, well, um, we got spat on, um, we got uh, ridiculed, it was just horrible. We were basically told to, you know, stay away, lock ourselves away and, and hide, not be in public. Um, and That's of enough. course the daycare, yeah. I mean, it just, it just and they boycotted the daycare. As well. yes. It must have been a pretty easy decision to come to New Zealand with all that going on, I imagine, Gloria. Mm. Well, when we came over here, for uh, everybody just I literally opened their arms up mm. and, you know, hey, we welcome, welcome you, hugs and Welcome everything. home, because you are yes. from New Zealand originally. I am, I'm a Kiwi, yes. But one of the things about Eva, she was such a, she seems just such a strong little girl and just take it in, in her stride, all this attention as well. What was she like to have in those years? Um, oh, she was really precocious and she was really out there and she really wanted to, to get the message across and she wanted to do that and, mm. you know, and she did. Well, that's one of the things. We've got footage now of her talking because one of the things Eve did was educate people about AIDS, HIV. Let's have a look at Eve talking. When you come up to a child with HIV or AIDS, you have to put your hand out. You don't walk away from them or like if somebody comes to you and asks for help you don't <coughs> shut your door on them because they need help. I've lived through my years with love and care from other people especially my mum and I just want all of you to let them know that you love them and that you're always there for them. Did she realise, I mean, what an effect she had on New Zealand, though, as well, of making people so acceptable of the illness? Uh, she was very much aware of what she had, and she was very much aware of the prejudice and the stigma about it. Mm. And she really wanted to, you know, to open the hearts of everybody. And, and she did those sort of things, like, you know, she had the hackathon in Napier, which was just, it just blew people away. And, and, you know, people that were afraid just came up and gave her a hug. and. You know, all those sort of things. And there was even a man in a wheelchair who wanted to make a donation, but he said that he was too frightened to hug her. 
And he, and then he went up to him and said, arms open, and she said, but you can hug me, and that was it. And he just gave her a big hug. Oh. He said, that's good enough for me. Just, it's just such a wonderful statement about New Zealand, Rachel, mm. that New mm. Zealanders, you know, and this is a long time ago, yeah. you know, when there was that stigma attached, mm. were able to accept Eve and embrace her. How, how have things changed? Are there still stigma? Is there still a stigma attached at all to people with HIV or, or have we learned about it enough now? I think firstly to say I think all of us are very proud uh, of how New Zealand responded particularly to Eve but, and, and generally really um, for people living with HIV, many of whom were um, gay men. Mm. So it was a very, it was challenging, people didn't understand, uh, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of fear a lot of fear. It's good to know that 15 years on we're not seeing that degree of stigma and discrimination, misunderstanding, ignorance. People aren't scared of cups of coffee and things like that anymore. Or shaking hands. Or, or shaking hug. hands. However, there still are, there still is enough stigma and discrimination to have an impact on people living with HIV in New Zealand today. Um, and that's why the AIDS Foundation still um, supports World AIDS Day mm. on the 1st of December mm. to raise people's awareness to say it's excellent that we've done so much to remove the stigma and discrimination, but the job's not finished yet. What are the infection rates now in New Zealand? I mean, I've heard that it's a lot of women now are getting infected mm. as well. Is that correct? Not quite, no. Um, basically, the reality is that the people most likely to get HIV in New Zealand are still gay or bisexual men. We have had a recent increase in heterosexual diagnoses, and the reality about that is a, a good a significant chunk of those have come from overseas. So you're not very likely to get HIV in New Zealand as a, a heterosexual couple, because the main way it's transmitted in New Zealand is sexually. Mm. Um, and I think the key thing is to also acknowledge the significant shift from the time when Eve was diagnosed. Mm. Our blood screening is done extremely yes. well. We have, we are not at risk of HIV being transmitted through blood transfusions, mm. as it was way back in the days when we didn't even know what the virus was. Mm. Um, and you know, we knew there was AIDS. Mm. We could see people being sick. We didn't know why. So much information and knowledge mm. is now um, something that we, we work with. But we're still stuck at times with people's experiences in the workplace, for example, or in personal relationships where mm. people can still be scared unnecessarily and that then reflects back on the person who's positive. So make it clear then, what should we not be scared about? You know, like what, I mean, obviously sexually, trend, you know, use mm. of needles, sexual mm. activity mm. is risky. Well, though specifically what it is is really recognising that um, practically everything is safe. Okay. As far as HIV goes, in fact, you're far more likely to get another STI, any other STIs. I think particularly for women, the HPV virus, these are real concerns that can lead to cancer, and, ca and cervical cancer in particular has quite a high rate of, of women dying of cancer. Whilst HIV, we're so pleased to have seen the radical drop in, in deaths of AIDS. And really, if Eve had been around, she probably would have benefited from those treatments, which only came mm. into place in 96, 97. Um, that means that we've seen this extraordinary success of people not dying. It's not a cure. No. It basically suppresses the virus. And how long it suppresses for, we just cross fingers mm. and hope that it will be a decent amount of time, mm. but we're still not sure. Some things haven't changed though, and it's still one of the things you can do to protect yourself is use a condom. Condom and lube, and then yeah. particularly for gay men, but for heterosexuals as well, we're saying really if, if you're unsure about your own, um, not only HIV status, but STIs get checked. The testing is really Five free. Five tests now as well, that's, that's so right. quick. We've got a rapid test in the AIDS Foundation that's free and any of our four mm. centres obviously go to our website. But what's most important, I think, is all New Zealanders watching this, you're likely to know someone mm. either who's lived with AIDS, um, has uh, just with those of us who were touched by um, the messages that Eve gave to us all, but also we may know people in at-risk groups, those who are gay or bisexual men, people who may or may not be needle users, really in many ways they're actually very low um, uh, risk mm. in New Zealand as well. So the key thing is challenge our own stigma and discrimination, make sure we've got the facts and realise there really is no risk unless you're about to jump yeah. into bed with somebody. With somebody that's right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely lovely to have you here. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to say? I mean, Eve, it's been 15 years now. How do you feel? Um, yes, it's a, it's a long time, but I, I feel that, you know, there's been a lot of progress made mm. and um, the stigma has, you know, uh, and even in, all over the world, mm. you know, it's much better. Mm. Um, there's also, you know, like we were talking about before, but there's also a testing in New Zealand for New Zealand women now who mm. become pregnant yes, for the first right. time. And they, um, when they have go in for their first pregnancy test, mm. um, they are offered to have an HIV test 
and I right. encourage yeah. women to do that. And absolutely, it's a really important thing, mm. particularly because a lot of them don't use no. condoms, and we no, don't, know. don't even know you have it as so well. It's really, right. and it's an offer. You don't, they don't have to do it, right. but it's really important that they do that um, because then they can put them on a drug regime before the baby is born. That's right. Well, we'd love you to have you, and I have to say on behalf of New Zealand, thank you for loaning us Eve for a while. Oh, she oh. was fantastic. Well, look, and I just want to mention thank you also, Rachel, for coming on, and you did want to promote Positively Glamorous, which is. Um, a fundraiser for the AIDS uh, for children living with AIDS. Children living with AIDS. It's on Sunday, 30th of November, the Studio 340K Road in Auckland. 7:30. The doors 7 open. 7:30. Well worth it. And it also sends children to and camps. And it sends. It's well. for the. Uh, we have um, over 40 children under mm. the age of 18 in New Zealand, and we would like to send them to uh, Camp Good Time in Australia. Okay. Thank, Thank you, so Gloria. Now the documentary all about Eve screens on TVNZ7 next Tuesday, December the 2nd. And for more information about World AIDS Day on December the 1st, see our website.